Welcome. This is a KC Tech School video on Tinkercad circuits and specifically how to use the multimeter function to measure voltage, current and resistance in a circuit. In the first video, we build a simple circuit using a resistor which limits current to other devices, an LED which illuminates, a 9 volt battery to supply power and some wires to connect the resistor and LED to the 9 volt battery. Then we put in a multimeter and chose a voltmeter function and we put it across the LED and then we press the start simulation function to measure that voltage across that LED. At this point it's good to see what's happening in this circuit that we've just built electrically. Well electricity is a form of energy and it's a flow of the negative charges called electrons through a closed circuit as shown. Current is really the rate at which these electric charges flow. And electron current flow is from negative to positive. Electrically, it's often useful to look at it the other way. And this is known as conventional current flow from positive to negative. The potential difference of voltage is really the energy needed to move a unit charge between two points. Voltage is measured in volts. In circuits though, there is always some kind of resistance, which is the opposition to the flow of electric charges or electrons and is measured in ohms. Ohm's law describes the relationship between voltage, current and resistance, where V equals voltage, I equals current and R equals resistance. If the resistance is increased, the current decreases. The voltage or potential difference though is also related to voltage drops. In our circuit, the potential difference across the power supply or battery supplying the circuit is 9 volts and is measured in reference to the zero point or the negative side of the supply. As current flows though, some of the supplied energy or the voltage potential is lost as the current encounters the resistance. This is known as causing a voltage drop. For example, there'll be a voltage drop across the resistor as it's offering resistance and also across the LED. In truth, there'll be tiny voltage drops across the wires and even the battery as it has tiny internal resistance. And if we look at our circuit, we've just measured the voltage across the LED, which means the voltage drop across the LED is 2.03 volts. Now we're going to connect another multimeter up and also use the voltmeter function. The voltmeter is always the default as you can see here, but we can also choose the ammeter function or the resistance function. This time we're going to connect it across the resistor in the circuit. And as usual, we'll choose the appropriate wire colors for multimeters, which are red for the positive terminal. And we're going to use a black wire to denote the negative terminal. I've also connected this multimeter across the resistor and there's some very good reasons why we connect a voltmeter across a component. Voltmeters have an extremely high internal resistance which is important because we don't want any current coming from the real circuit to be diverted through the meter itself. If we look at this animation the large arrows denote current flowing through a device. A tiny amount flows through the meter as denoted by the small arrows. This shows that the meter is really then just measuring across a component. If we affect that current going through that component well then it affects the voltage reading. Now if we look at the circuit now I've connected up a multimeter but in ammeter mode. This is the multimeter at the, at the top. You can see though it's connected slightly differently. While the voltmeters below across the LED and across the resistor are connected in parallel with the component we're trying to measure, ammeters or multimeters in ammeter mode must be connected in series, meaning they must become part of the circuit as shown by the mouse. If I then click start, we can see a measurement coming up. In this case, although it's in ammeter mode, measuring amps, 
Because it's an electronic circuit, generally we measure milliamps or thousands of an amps, and we can see we've got 14.8 milliamps flowing through the circuit. Multimeters in ammeter mode must have a very low internal resistance to ensure that all the current in the circuit flows through them. Here we can see the large arrow denoting the full current, which is going through the ammeter, which is placed in series with the other circuit components. Okay, now we're going to use the ohm meter function or the resistance function of our multimeter. You can see from the circuit I've connected a multimeter across the resistor just like I'm about to measure voltage. In other words, I've put the multimeter in parallel with the resistor. But in this case, I want to measure its resistance. So we need to change the mode from voltage mode to resistance mode to make it essentially an ohm meter. Now to measure this resistance though, we need to disconnect one of the wires so to ensure there's no voltage or power going to the component, in this case the resistor, that we want to measure. So I'll just get rid of that wire temporarily by using the little rubbish bin or delete. And now I can hit start. And we can see there's 470 ohms across this resistor. To measure other components resistance though, it's a little bit more problematic in this particular circuit. For example, it would be useful to be able to measure the resistance of the LED. However, different devices exhibit different resistive properties. In regard to resistance, most devices can be classified as being ohmic or non-ohmic. An ohmic device is a device that has a fixed resistance that doesn't change regardless of the applied voltage. A resistor is an example of an ohmic device. And we can really only use multimeters to measure the resistance of an ohmic device. In the previous example, to measure the resistance of the resistor, we disconnected the wire between the LED and the resistor first. This essentially disconnects the 9 volt battery from the circuit. The reason we do this is that the ohm meter has an in, its own internal battery which supplies current to the component under test. In this case, you can see the current coming from the multimeter through the resistor. Essentially, it's measuring its current. Then by using Ohm's law, it uses the current that it's measured it uses the known battery voltage inside the multimeter and then can calculate the resistance, in this case 470 ohms. A non-ohmic device, however, has a resistance which varies with the applied voltage. If we change the voltage, the resistance will change. Examples of this include an LED and also things like light bulbs. So really, we can't use a multimeter to measure the resistance. The only thing we can do is rely on the measurements we've already taken, such as current and voltage, along with using laws such as Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. These will be discussed in further videos. Well, we can see from the diagram, we already have some measurements. So we've taken two volts or 2.03 volt measurement across the LED and we know through the ammeter that there's 14.8 milliamps flowing through the circuit and the LED itself. If we look at Ohm's law, we know that voltage equals current times resistance. But to work out the resistance of the LED in this particular circuit, we can use resistance equals voltage over current. So if we take those measurements, we take the 2.03 volts, divide it by the 14.8 milliamps. In this case, we need to convert the milliamps into the base unit of amps. And then we can work out the resistance of the LED this particular time is 137 ohms. Well, the aim of this video was to introduce you to the multimeter function of Tinkercad circuits, and specifically to use the different multimeter functions to measure voltage, current, and resistance. To sum up, to measure voltage, we must put the multimeter into voltmeter mode and connect it in parallel or across the component we're trying to measure. To measure current going through a circuit or a component, 
we must put the multimeter to and meter mode and connect it in series with the circuit we're trying to measure. If we want to measure the resistance of a component, we must put the multimeter into ohm meter mode and connect it in parallel or across the component we're trying to measure, but we must disconnect the power from one side of the device. 